The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. The following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. By tomorrow, I will rule the world! <laughs> You think he's gone? He's not gone. That's the whole point. He's never gone. Is this some radical new therapy? You see? Well, I must have not been paying attention when you were just talking to me. Do you think that you could repeat the question and I listen more attentively? There must have been something. No sounds out of Paul today. No oboe today, Paul? Boom, boom, boom. We'll wait. I think he's already aggravated with me, which is going to make for a good show. Hey, how you guys doing? Good, good. Glad to hear it. Tom Duggan here on the Paying Attention podcast. What did we, you hear? We, ha- we have some great numbers. I wish I had them in front of me. I forgot. Maybe if, uh, if Dave's in the building, he can run them to me during the break. Uh, but we got our, uh, our ratings for September. They were spectacular. Uh, of all podcasts combined? Uh, of all podcasts combined. What, I, what do you no, mean? No, ratings for what? How does that work? For, the, for, the, for the, this podcast, and then there's ratings. You know what ratings are? Yeah. And so we got the ratings but you're, for you're this podcast. But you're out in various places, right? Um, Podbeam and, and, and yeah. Stitcher yeah, and this, we're on and, this and that. And yeah, we're on iHeartRadio. For, the, for the audio, you can download the audio of this program on uh, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Google Play, uh, Spreaker, po- uh, Spotify, Podbean, Podbean. Pre- pretty much any good podcatcher, right? You know, on the Android side. And then we also have our uh, the video of the show, which goes out over Facebook now instead of YouTube. But we also still post it on YouTube, so they add all of those numbers, Paul. Very cool. All right, and, and, they're, and, and they're big. And, and I wish I had them in front of me, but they are huge. I'm gonna see if I can huge. find those in my email. Okay, I, th- I think we're somewhere in the neighborhood of ninety thousand downloads, huge, which is huge, awesome. Huge numbers. Huge numbers. Huge. If I was Donald Trump, I'd say the best numbers in the history yeah. of the world that anybody has ever seen. <laughs> right? Because everything to him, like he has coffee in the morning. Huge. This is the best coffee yeah. in the history of yeah. the world, and many people tell me that that uh, this is the best coffee. Best coffee. Love Everyone's coffee. telling me how great my coffee is. Unbelievable. So we've got a lot of things to get to today. Paul was a little late, so we're going to give him a minute to get, uh, to get acclimated. Uh, before we start, though, we had our one-year anniversary today, uh, this last week, I mean, for the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. It's the, this week was the uh, one-year anniversary of this studio opening. Uh, the one-year anniversary for this show will be in December, and we're going to make a pretty big deal out of that. Um, and Paul came, and he was the entertainer, which was Unbelievable, because as I was saying before we went on the air, it's amazing how when he's getting paid to do a gig, he's actually here on time. And I was here at one fifty nine today. And and was prepared when I walked in the room. The the party hadn't started yet. His guitar was set up. The mic, yeah. everything was prepared. I'm like, wow! If you could only do that for my show, an hour, an hour early. Well, well, here you have to, you know, when when you play, there's a lot of equipment to set up. Right. So you have to set everything up. You have to have a sound check. Right. You have to sound pretty good before everybody comes in. Right. So you have to come early. So you have less of a reason, of, so, uh, less of an excuse to be so today late I came, to this show because there's no preparation. All you have to do is come here and open your today laptop. Today I came at 1.59. This right. thing starts at 2. Right. So I was up here by 2 o'clock. Right. No yeah. lateness at all. Well, we were. We were two minutes late. Three, I'm sorry, four minutes late. Because we had to wait for you to get all set up. I mean, uh, just because you walked in at one fifty nine, we didn't go live at two like we're supposed to. Well, well, you know, you know that if I have nothing was, to set what, up what, other than to, uh, to open my What's amazing is he, he does a radio show on WCAP called Beneath the Surface, and he has to go on at a certain time. Like, like there's no like I'm late for my show because then there's no dead because air. that's live, right? Right, but so, but is this not live, Paul? Uh, this is live, but you're, but it's not necessary. So it's you're, okay for you to be late o'clock. to my show because if you're two minutes late and we start two minutes late, you don't mind. Well, I, I looked at my computer uh, clock and by right. I was sitting up here by two o'clock. So, so before we get to, I don't think I don't think that's called. Let's late. continue to rip on Paul for a while because it, it entertains it entertains me greatly because he just takes things way too serious. Um, also, not, because he's my friend and he can take it. Not taking it. So I, I have a question, Paul, and if this gets uncomfortable, at all, let me know and we'll move on. But I was sitting here. Um, at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe anniversary, and you played a song. Yes. By Elton John. Yes. And I was floored by that. A couple of them, actually. 
And the reason I was floored by that, for those who are listening, we do a charity bash every year in March. It's going to be March 22nd this year. And, I, and Paul's always asking, like, if he can do stuff, like, f- during, the, during, the, during the bash. And I'd love to have him be more interactive and be part of it. So I said, Paul, can you uh, do me a favor? We're going to give out some awards, uh, writing awards. And can you uh, just read, these are the nominees, and this is who won. And he said yes, and then I sent him the name of the nominees, and he called me and said, or emailed me and said, yeah, I can't do that. And I said, why? And he said, because one of the nominees is the lesbian writer. And Hold on. And he said, if I do this, then I'm giving credibility or I'm validating her lesbian column in your paper. And I'm like, Paul, but she didn't win. So you're just reading the, the nominee. You're not reading like, and she won, and you're handing her the award. That I would get. She's a nominee, and she didn't win. No, no, I'm not going to do it. So we had to scramble at the last minute to find somebody else to do Paul's job. And listen, I respect that. Paul has, Paul has a very religious point of view, and although I, I mocked him a little bit over it because I mock everything that everybody does, um, I, I at least respected it, that he didn't even want to read the name of the lesbian columnist because he didn't want to at least feel internally that he was validating what she does. So then I come to the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe last week, and the gayest gay man on the friggin' planet, Elton John, he's up here singing his song, and I'm sitting there going, how do you square that, Paul? And I was going to ask you that night, but it was just, there was too much going on. Well, our vast studio audience here, I think they probably know how you square that. Do you guys, do you have any idea what I'm going to say? No. 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 Okay. (laughs) It's actually the most simple thing in the world. Yes, Paul. Never You're w- validating his gayness because he's a huge music star. And Go ahead, Paul. Well, well, I don't want to interrupt. I definitely want to hear this answer. All right. First of all, I don't use terms like gayness. Now, I don't care what term you use. I, at, that, uh, at your bash a couple of years ago, Yes. Um, I would have by, – and, and are you sure she didn't win? I thought she did no, win. No, she didn't win. That was my argument to you, Paul. Okay, she was one of the Paul, three nominees. I was like, Paul, she didn't win. If she won, right. I could understand your objection, but she's not even going to win. Okay, I, I see my, my faulty memory is that she won. Mm-mm. All right. But whether she won or not, she was one of the three nominees, and I had to get up there and, in a sense, promote or validate what she was doing. Not, right. I, I, don't care, I don't care what she was at that moment. It's what she was doing. And what I was validating by doing that is a column about homosexual behavior being... Um, being, being morally acceptable, right, right in, in society, and that's what her column is all about. Right. If she, who has a same-sex attraction and has a female partner in real life, if she were to write a column about anything else, uh, about uh, music, about sports, about any of the science. Well, she does. Sometimes she writes about education. I would, have been, I would have been up there promoting that like, like she was anybody else. But her column specifically is about the promotion of, of homosexual behavior and lifestyle in society. And Elton John's That's not. That's why. And Elton John's not. The songs that I was singing in Elton John the other night were simply regular songs. It was about nothing, but, but noth- nothing intrinsically immoral in my book. Right, but they're his songs. It doesn't he, matter. He wrote like songs. Like I said, if she did something else, I would promote it. Uh, doesn't make See how simple that is? No, it doesn't still of doesn't make no sense to me. It's the it. It's not the person. It's the work that we're talking about. Right, but Elton John, uh, Elton John wrote, if you listen to most of his songs, they're about being gay. No, like they're most not. Most of his songs, if you read into them, it's exactly what it is. They're totally not. And then I go on the internet and I see pictures of Elton John making out with guys. I'm like, I I'm, I'm positive Paul's not happy with this. So how is it that well, he's playing the... You're promoting... Whether, uh, by singing his songs, you're promoting a singer yes. who makes his money as an openly gay man making out with other guys live like on TV no, he and on the internet. He doesn't make his money as an openly gay man. He has a same-sex attraction, uh, which, I, which I think is naturally disordered. But he makes his money on regular songs, right, regular well, pop songs. Yeah. And those two songs that I sang, one was called Rocket Man. Yeah, we know what that's about. And by the way, in the song itself, the lyrics of the song, he's married to a woman, yeah. if, if you listen to that. Well, and the other point is I don't think he wrote most of his lyrics. Well, he and Bernie Toppin. Right. Yeah, I think yeah, his boyfriend. I think Elton no, ten, it wasn't his boyfriend. tends to write the music part, and Bernie yeah. does a lot of the lyrical yeah. part. Yeah, so I'm sorry, so, husband. So, so it has nothing to do with homosexuality. All right. Uh, yeah, I think we should take a vote among our... Our, our listeners, uh, let's ask people to comment on the live feed. And if you're watching this or listening to this, and um, 
you're not doing it live if it's after the show is over. Please feel free to continue commenting on whether or not you thought that was a valid explanation for Paul because I, I kind of think that it really I think it's really, pretty simple. I kind of think it really isn't. But um, I, I will continue to break your chops about it now from now until the next I batch. tell you what, if, if Danny, which is her name, is, uh, was a straight woman yes. um, that wrote a column about um, promoting uh, and condoning homosexuality in, in society, I, again, would not have been comfortable um, introducing it as a, uh, a possible winner. Uh, our, our. So, so she has nothing to do with it. It's the column itself. Okay. Just like he, Elton John, has nothing to do with it. It's the songs itself. Is it me or does he sound like a Democrat? I'm just, I'm just wondering. I'm just wondering. I think I sound like a sane human being. All right. Well, you are definitely sane. I'll give you that. Thank you. After that, though, I don't know. I, so I don't know, Tom. I think the, the comments are running in Paul's face. Are they really? Yeah. All right. You well, run into the comments. If, if, they're running, listen, if I'm wrong, I'll be, happy. I'll be the first guy to say I'm wrong, but it just kind of seemed odd to well, me. Most people are sane. But, plus, well. it, plus, it made for a funny segment. So, um... <laughs> So let's start the show, all right? Because uh, should we do the music all over again and just start the show? <laughs> so, uh, Paul, we got a couple of local things that I need to talk about before we get right. to Brett Kavanaugh and all this other stuff. So you remember we came in, Paul, a couple of weeks ago, and we talked about, maybe a month ago, we talked about how the Methuen City Council voted to cut $1.8 million out of the police budget, even though the police budget was balanced, and it was the school department that was $4 million yes. in the red. And they all sat around and they went line by line through the police budget and cut a total of $1.8 million. We all remember that, right? You guys at home? All right, I see you all nodding. Good. Yes, I see that too. So everybody's up to speed. So this week, I was floored beyond belief. Now, it, it takes a lot to like get me to almost fall off my chair. I mean, I sat and watched those Kavanaugh hearings. I, I've seen everything now. But then I put on the Methuen City Council meeting. It was worse than the Kavanaugh hearings. It was worse. Because Paul Fahey, who was the aide for uh, Methuen Mayor Jim Jajuga, got up and said at one point during the meeting that he was just notifying the council that next meeting we're going to be coming before you and asking for an additional appropriation for the police department. Because one of the lines you guys cut out of the police department was police protection for community events, such as the Santa Parade, the the Halloween Stroll. Methuen Day. So Methuen has all these community events that they have throughout the year, and you need police protection. You need the police to be there because it's a community event. Any idiot with a gun can walk in and start shooting. You need somebody there just in case, right? So as soon as he said it, counselors went ballistic. It was, trust me, worse than the Kavanaugh hearings. Steve Saber, the guy whose idea it was to cut $1.8 million out of the... Uh, for, to cut $1.8 million of your police protection in Methuen. He then, do you have that queued up? I do. I don't want to go to you blind. He then, believe it or not, and you'll hear me heckling in the background, he then has the friggin' nerve, Steve Saber, Methuen City Councilor, to say this. Police saying that Halloween coverage, parade coverage, whatever, the Santa Parade is in jeopardy. Um, Please keep in mind that the police department is being overspent right now. We've been asking you to stop. I would have preferred, and I think the rest of the council would have preferred that that contract be held up and you just pay the current rates. But to be overpaying on something that this council did not approve, (coughs) this is coming to a head sooner than February. Where you're going to come to us and say that we don't have the money to maintain our police officers. Right, because you cut it $1.8 million. This council is being negligent. That's not the case. It is the case. So, again, I voice? asked the mayor last time to stop overpaying. We had a reorganization plan in place. I know it had holes in it, but it would have forced us to stop. It failed. That happened two weeks ago. We're it failed, it and you failed. If it were passed this week, we'd probably it would probably result in two to three more layoffs. So... Every week that goes by that we're overspending, we're running out of money. And I have no intention of moving more money into that department until this gets resolved. So, you know what, instead of February, if it's going to hit, if it's going to come to a head in two weeks where we can't pay for parades and stuff, with all due respect, if if the mayor and you, the mayor and the chief cannot 
manage the department properly at any point, let us know. If we need to bring someone else in to do the job, we will. Wow. But this is a real serious issue for this community, and please don't smirk. I mean, it's, it's, I don't know what else we can do. Madam Chair, I do need to respond. It's the mayor's responsibility to let the council know if there's, a short, if there's going to be a shortfall. The council made decisions, which was their absolute right to make cuts to particular line items in the police budget. One of those line items was special events. The chief explained at the time that that was budgeted to do all of the special events that were traditionally done. We can't do them all with that reduction. Right. So we will ask the council, it is your judgment to make, but if you say no, we have to manage to that number. Right. Okay. He's right. I'm simply saying now, I don't want to wait two weeks. That's all I'm saying. So, and the last item that I just I wanted can to cut that. Is, yes, I do uh, agree. So, that I have to say. You can cut that. So, I, I know you probably never thought you'd see me come into this show and defend Jim Jajuga. It gives me no pleasure to do so, given the current situation. But the fact is, this is not Mayor Jajuga playing, ga playing political games. They're making it sound, Paul, as if Jim Jajuga is playing games and threatening to cancel the Santa parade for the kids to punish the council. When the fact is, the council punished the police because the school's overspent. And it was Steve Saber's motion to cut. Not only did they vote to cut $1.8 million out of the police budget. They went line by line through the budget. They didn't just do a $1.8 million. They went line by line, added, them, added up all the cuts, and it came to one8 And when they got to community events, they put that line to zero. And when they did, the police chief got up and said, well, then we can't have a Santa parade. We can't have Bethune Day. We can't have the Halloween stroll. All the things, all the, all the community events that the city puts on, there'll be no police protection. They didn't care. They didn't care then, and they don't care now. What they want is a cancellation of the Santa Parade because they think that's going to make Jim DeJuga look bad and they think they're going to be able to spin that to make Jim DeJuga look bad. And I'll tell you, it, it will pain me like nobody's business if I have to stand on the top of the highest rooftop in Methuen and scream Jim DeJuga's right. On this one, he's right. And shame, shame on, 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 uh, on Steve Saber. Shame on you. The lies that you told at that meeting were disgraceful and unbecoming of a Methuen City Councilor. I supported Steve Saber. I endorsed Steve Saber. I had very high hopes for him. But to sit there and make it look like it's the mayor's fault when you personally specifically cut that line item out of the budget, even after you were told it would result in the cancellation of the Santa Parade and other things, you didn't seem to give a shit. You didn't seem to care about the kids. You didn't seem to care about the events that the, in the community that gets put on. And now the answer is, well, if they can't live within their means, if they're too inept to run the department after we stripped out their budget and didn't give them any money, well, then it must be their fault. We'll find someone else to run it. How about we find someone else to run the city council? How about we find that, Paul? What is the, um, just, just to back up a little bit, what is the underlying motive that they want to make DeJuga look bad? I think, I think there's a war going on between the council and the mayor's office right now, and for good reason in a lot of ways. He, he continually lies to the council. Um, he continually tells them he's going to give them information and doesn't. They get packets of information with numbers on them 20 minutes before a meeting, and then they start talking about it, and it turns out all the numbers are Why, wrong. Why, does DeJuga want the council to look bad? Uh, I, think, I think my personal opinion is that the mayor's just incompetent. Mm. And I think that comes out at every single meeting okay. because they constantly sit there and say, well, we're negotiating numbers, but these aren't even the right numbers. How can we even have this discussion? McCar Councillor McCarty, who was actually on board with cutting the cops, I think because he's a left winger who just hates cops, but I've never met him, so that's just my opinion, um, uneducated opinion at, at that. Um, even, even he said... You know, at this point, like, you know, the, the mayor's just not doing his job. Every time we sit here, we're, we're negotiating numbers, we're talking numbers, and we, we don't even think these numbers are right. Like, mm. nobody has the right numbers. And at one point, there was a city council meeting a few weeks ago where everyone had different numbers. Like, they're all voting on something, and one person has, like, $10,000 on that line item, and someone else has $23,000 on that line item. And nobody, so it makes them look dysfunctional because he's, not, he's incompetent and not doing his job. Despite all of that... On this one, he's right. So it seems like you have two incompetent parties that are against each other here. It really starts <laughs> to look that way, doesn't it? Which uh, goes back to my column in the September Valley Patriot, where I called for a complete state takeover of the city of Methuen. Hmm. The school committee is incompetent and corrupt. 
The city council is incompetent and corrupt. The mayor is corrupt and maybe incompetent. Maybe, maybe I'm, I'm giving him a, a free pass by saying he's incompetent. We know he's corrupt um, and, and maybe incompetent. So at every single level of municipal government in Methuen, what you see is games being played at the expense of kids, games being played at the expense of public safety, games being played at the expense of municipal services being rendered to the people of Methuen. Well, it's the people that vote them in, so the people, I agree. Can, people can vote them out. I agree. I agree. But in the meantime, no Santa parade for the kids? And his answer is, we'll take it from within the police budget. Well, you just cut them $1.8 million. Where are they going to get it? So, so here's Steve Sabres, because here's what's going to happen. All right? Nobody has thought this through. Or they have it, they just don't care. What's going to happen is, in order for the chief to be able to fund these community events, to fund police protection at these community events, he's going to have, have to lay off cops. Mm. So every time there's a community event, they're going to lay off three cops. And then mm. they're going to pay somebody to do those community events. And what? then the next event that comes up, like Methuen Day is coming up in a couple of weeks, they're going to lay off three cops. And then the Halloween stroll, they're going to lay off three more cops to pay for that. And this is what Steve Sable wants. What he really wants is to decimate the police department because of his personal hatred for people in the police department over this contract that really has nothing to do with the police department. It has to do with the superior officers union, which, by the way, didn't do anything wrong. Right? It was the previous city council that voted on a contract they didn't read. I mean, if somebody said to me, I'm not going to read your contract, just give me any contract and I'll sign it. I'm going to give myself a $10 million bonus. Don't blame me for that. Blame them. If someone offered me and said, Tom, I'm going to double your salary next year, you're going to, no, 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 please give it to the teachers. They deserve it way more. No, I'm taking the money. And I think everybody listening would take the money. Yeah. So if that wasn't bad enough, Paul, if Steve Saber's ridiculousness and dishonesty and lies wasn't bad enough, we then had Joyce Campagnon, the gift that keeps on giving. And Joyce got up, and I didn't think it could get worse, but she made it worse. Go ahead, Ed. And, and to, to um, Mr. Fahey, I just, you know, the issue about not having the special events because of the police, I mean... It just upsets me, and I'm sure there's other councillors. Well, voted. That yeah. It's like punishing the residents of, of the community. Well, how do you pay Not for only it? the residents, you're talking about the children also, course, like the for children. the Santa Parade or the Halloween thing. Cancel the parade. You know, there are police officers that sit inside, and I'm not saying that they don't Ooh. do anything. I don't mean that. Oh. Mean wow. about it's time that some of them step up to the plate. Ooh. And I'm not saying they're all in the same boat about wanting the top dollar. But there are some police officers, men and women there, that have always contributed to the community. And my hat's off to those people. But to say that we're going to go without these special events, the taxpayers are being hit all the time. You don't hear them saying they're not going to pay the taxes. Because if they did, you'd be attaching their homes. So to be using the special events as an escape goal. No, you cut the, the special events budget. Any other department, I think it's terrible. Because there are ways she really to stupid? put police officers out there. Maybe you won't have five of them sitting inside the office. Um, and I'm not saying that they're wrong, but I'm saying oh. there's always a way they're to dispatchers. provide, and our police department has always been there wow. for this community. So for us, uh, for me to say that they won't do it, I'd like to hear it from the police themselves to say that they won't come out and help. I know the chief said it, but I'm talking about the everyday officers. Thank you. So I guess I have to reiterate, uh, when we do, we, uh, the reason you were hearing me in the background is what we do is we, I go live on my, on my phone and I podcast the Methuen City Council meetings on my Facebook page for all those people who aren't in Methuen and can't watch it. And I've been getting a lot of emails from people saying, hey, I was on vacation at the last meeting and I got to watch the meeting. Thank you for doing that. But I kind of do like a mystery science theater 3000 kind of thing yeah. where I kind of heckle them during the meeting. And yes. So that's what you heard. And I can't, really, I can't really say that any comment would be better than the one that I made during the meeting. Is, can she really be this stupid? 
She actually made the comment that we have police officers that sit, sit behind a desk and sit in an office. Maybe they should get out behind their desk and they should come help us. Right, but you still have to fucking pay them. You still have to pay them. And there's no money, Joyce, because you voted to zero out the line item for the Santa Parade and the other events in Methuen out of the police budget. How simple is this? Like, this is not rocket science. It, listen, if they can't get this right, if they can't be honest about this, then Methuen is in far more trouble than even we thought up until the last couple of weeks. Quick question. Yes, Paul. And do, does the town or the city, is it the town or the city? Do we know the yet? The city known as the town of Methuen. Okay. Does the city known as the town of Methuen have too many police officers? No. In fact, they need more police officers. They need more police officers. Right. But there's a lot of folks on the, school, uh, on the committee that does not believe so. Well, what happened was the last year, the previous council voted for a contract for the superior officers that supposedly gave them raises to get them up to a salary of about $400,000. And the previous council voted unanimously for that contract. And they say that they were told that the contract was zero, two, and two. Zero for the, raised for the first year, 2% the next year, 2% the next year. But as it turns out, they were lied to and it had higher raises in it, some of them up to like 30%. And so now they're all pissed off. And they want to take it out on the residents who are the ones that actually call 911 when someone's raping their mom mm. and say, can you get a cop over here and can you help out, right? They decided they were going to take it out on all the cops. Now, here's the thing. Because of the way civil service works, if they decided, if the chief said, okay, you know what, we have five captains, I'm going to lay off three captains. Those captains don't get laid off. Under civil service rules, those captains will go back down to lieutenant, and then five lieutenants will be demoted to sergeant, and 10 sergeants will be, promote, will be demoted to patrolmen, and 27 patrolmen get laid off. That's how it works, and they know that's how it works. It's been explained to them ad nauseum to the point where, like, it's been drummed into their head. So after learning all that, they said, no, screw the people of Methuen. We're going to cut $1.8 million out of the police budget. And part of that one point eight is the community events line where police officers are paid to go protect people during, like, the Santa Parade, the Hollywood st Halloween stroll and all that. So th this, is, this is worse than the Kavanaugh hearing, as far as I'm concerned. This is local, and these are people's lives. And police officers, what they really want is to decimate the police department to make Jujuga look bad so it, when he comes up for re-election, they can say, well, yeah, but look what he did to the police department. Crime's up in Methuen because we laid off 27 cops, right? But you know what? You're not hurting Jim Jujuga. Because if Jim Jujuga runs for re-election, he's most likely going to win anyway. The guy's got more money than God and access to more money than that through, through all of his rich, rich corrupt political friends. So you're not going to hurt Jim Jujuga. It's not, you can't hurt his reputation any more than it's already been hurt. His reputation is crap. And, and it's not going to hurt him. Who it hurts is the police officers who will be losing their jobs. Who it hurts is the person that calls 911 and has to wait a half an hour for someone to come and save them from someone raping their daughter or shooting at their house or selling drugs next door or beating someone in their neighborhood. That's who they're hurting, and they don't seem to care, Paul. Right, I have a, they don't care. I, I have an unpopular question. That's not hyperbole. That's a fact. They don't care. They said it. They said they don't care. They said they don't care. Go ahead, Paul. My unpopular question is this. How important is the Santa Parade? Well, it's not really that important. I didn't uh, think it's so. Prob I'm, prob I'm, I'm going to give an unpopular answer. It's not, it's not really that important. I've never heard of any towns or cities necessarily having Santa Parades, at least none that I have really? lived in. Oh, we have one in North Andover. Lawrence has one. Oh, really? Where do you live? Newton, she lives in Newton, New Hampshire. You have a Santa and, and Parade? Santa Parade, yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah, just cause I've, I've never had just one. Just because your community is just kind of yeah. bad, you know, not, not that good. I guess the rest of them do. You're right. We could just cancel all the community events. But those community events are things that are good for kids. And it allows people to come out and talk to the police and the firefighters and get, kind of get to know them. It's a good PR thing for the community. And if it was canceled, you're right. It's not the end of the world. But don't blame Jim Jajuga. I can't believe these words are coming out of my mouth. I hear them coming out, and it just seems so wrong. Don't blame him for this particular thing. Don't, you're, you're being very objective. Don't blame J and, and to get up there and to grandstand like that was just, the, it wasn't, it was more than hypocrisy. It was just an outright lie. You were, 
Joyce Campignon and Steve Sabre were purposely trying to make the public believe that it wasn't their fault, and it is. So I say, you know what the Chiefs should do? Find out where, where Jim McCarty lives, find out where Steve Sabre lives, find out where Joyce Campignon lives, and lay off the cops that are working in their neighborhoods. Lay off the, and tell them, if we get a call in that neighborhood, you go to every other call that you've got on your list first, and you go to them last. And so when someone's breaking into Joyce Campignon's house to steal her stuff, when someone's stealing Jim McCarty's car out of, his, out of his driveway, or when somebody, God forbid, is breaking into Steve Saber's home and raping his wife, and he calls 911, he'll be the one feeling the effect of these cuts that he made. It's a disgrace. These cops go out there and they put their friggin' lives on the line. We had two incidents in the last month where a guy was barricaded in two separate instances where they had to get the SWAT team and they had to go in and the guys that were first on the scene were superior officers to take over the scene. They were the ones that are in charge of the scene. The sergeants or the captains or the lieutenants show up and then they coordinate what response they're going to do. Do they wait for the SWAT team? Do they go in first? Do they surround the house? Do they use a bullhorn? What do they do to try and resolve this situation while it's happening? And you're taking them and you're sending them home. And by the way, let's remember Methuen abuts Lawrence. All of the crime is fleeing Lawrence. You know where it's going? Methuen and Haverhill. And you guys are cutting police and you guys are playing games. And by the way, let me add one more thing. I know I, I said it a couple times, but I want to I really, really put an exclamation point on this. The police budget was balanced. Despite the fact that this contract went through and everybody's unhappy and, ca- and captains are going to make 400000 the police budget was balanced. It was balanced last year, the year before, the year before that, and this year. It was balanced. It was the school department that overspent by $4 million. And the reason that they want the focus on the police is because here's what the council did. They cut money out of the police, and they gave it to the schools. The schools overspent. And they not only borrowed $4 million to cover Junie Scandal's overspending, but they then increased the school budget on top of that. So you rewarded the people who broke the law, by the way, a felony in Massachusetts to overspend your budget on a school department. You rewarded them by giving them more money, and then you turned around and you blamed the police for overspending, and then punished the citizens by cutting their budget, and now you want to make it like it's their fault. That is the height of disgracefulness. I don't don't even know what other word I can come up with, Paul. Short of voting them out... And by the way, when is their term over? Next year. All right. Short of that, what is, it, what is there to do about this? I don't think there... Well, th- people could crowd into City Hall yeah. at the next meeting, and they could demand that the city councilors act responsible and fund the community events. And where do they get the money from? Um, th- well, they've got all kinds of money in free cash now because they took $1.8 million out of the police budget and stuck it in free cash. Give it back. Jim Jujuk is telling them to give it back. Now, listen, under normal circumstances, I'm the guy sitting here going, don't give Jujuga anything. Why would you give that guy anything? But he's right. He's right. So how do you sit there and go, well, I hate Jim Jujuga, so I'm going to make everybody else pay? That's just wrong. I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm, I'm, one of the reasons I'm so furious about this is that because it took – I didn't think it could happen, but Steve Saber single-handedly got me to defend Jim Jujuga. And that's what pisses me off, that these guys acted so recklessly – and so irresponsibly that they, that they pushed me to publicly support Jim Jujuga's move. It's disgraceful to make me do that. I think it actually makes you look do you good. Know, do you know how much I hate sitting here and saying the words Jim Jujuga is right about I, anything? I think it uh, increases your credibility as a human being well, and, and as a journalist. Well, uh, that, that you're able to take somebody who you're, you're at lockheads with yeah, but I still and say like something good about that person in this particular situation. I know, but I still don't like it. It still doesn't sit right with me. <laughs> well, that's, that's okay. Feelings, uh, you know, you, you, you're overcoming them. Shame on these clowns. They're yeah. all a bunch of clowns, every one of them. And then at one point, we're going to take a break, but then at one point, Jen Canan, who I've, you know, I've, I've treated her with kid gloves because I just don't want her mad at me because when she's mad at me, I get just deluged by all her supporters. Um, and I just don't need the aggravation. But I've got I, I to gotta put that aside for a minute because I'm just so tired of it. She's the chairman of the city council. Robert's rules of order say if you're going to speak on, an in, on, a, on a measure, you pass the gavel, and then you can speak on the measure. That way, if you say something out of order, someone can rule you out of order. She, she, puts, she passes the gavel, eviscerates Jessica Finicaro, belittles her, and berates her 
Unduly, I would say. But, you know, you might even agree with her that what she was saying was true. Fine. But when she was done speaking, she took the gavel back. You're supposed to leave the gavel with the vice chair until the issue is resolved. She takes the gavel back and five minutes later decides to speak again. Now she starts belittling and berating Jessica a second time while she's holding the gavel and nobody can rule her out of order because she's holding the gavel. Nobody can say you're out of order. So she, she irresponsibly sat there and ripped apart Jessica Finicaro. Why? Because Jessica wants an investigation into all the corruption and all of the conflicts of interest that have gone on in Methuen over the last few years. Every single one of those counselors, with the exception of Eunice Ziegler, is opposing an investigation of corruption in Methuen. Like, whatever. Listen, any counselor that voted no supports corruption. Any, and, I'm, and I don't care how mad they get at me. They can have all their supporters flood my inbox. That's fine. To have Jen Kinnan and the rest of them sit there and say, we're not going to vote for a, an investigation into all the corruption that went on in Methuen over the last several years. Well, other people are doing it. We asked the auditor to come in and there's other investigations. Wait, you are the city council. You are supposed to be the guardian of the taxpayers in Methuen. You need to get to the bottom of how this happened locally so that you can structure city government to stop it from happening again. And you took a walk. You took a walk because you don't want to do the work. And you took a walk because you're afraid, to, you're afraid of what's going to come out about you. That's all I have to say. I'm done with these clowns. And I feel bad. They all buy ads at, at election time. They probably won't next year. I don't even care at this point. Because if you can't, if you can't look the taxpayers in the eye at a public meeting... And be honest about the fact that you cut the Santa parade and try and make it like it's somebody else's fault, no matter how unpopular he is. You need to resign. They should all resign. Every one of them except for Eunice and, and Jessica. They should, all, they should all friggin' resign tomorrow. State needs to take over. Where's Charlie Baker when we need him? Charlie, please take over Methuen as quick as you possibly can, my friend. Back after this, I'm paying attention. A&M Auto Body, we got our friend Angelo over there, Angelo Memolo over there. He does great work on your car. So if you got a ding in your car, somebody hits you, you got a mechanical problem, you bring it to A&M Auto. He's on South Broadway in Lawrence on Inman Street. Angelo will take care of you. Um, so what's the address there? 341 Three South Broadway, Lawrence, Massachusetts. Then we got Joe Zingales, Rosanna Zingales Lopez from Century 21. They have been with us from the very first edition of the Valley Patriot. They've been with us from the very first Paying Attention show which was in 1999, back when he was Remax. He's not Remax anymore. Now he's Century 21, Teams and Gallus. And they sponsor our bash. They gave a $1,000 scholarship this year. They gave a $2,000 scholarship last year. And that money comes right out of their pocket. That's not like they're collecting money from other people and just using it like I do. They actually took money out of their pocket. So I don't know why these guys love me so much. I really don't. But Twin Lights, let me tell you how, how dedicated I am to helping my sponsors. The guys at Twin Lights Security needed an extra security guy to do private investigations and to do security for a certain thing in Boston. And they posted it on my page and asked if it was okay if they could use my page to solicit hiring people. And I said, you know what? As busy as I am, these guys sponsor the show. They sponsor the Valley Patriot. They give us $1,000 for the bash. I'm going to go work for these guys. So I called up Pat McLaughlin and I said, look, you help us every single time we need something. Whenever I put out a call, you're there. If you need an extra person and you're short, I'll take the night off and I'll come work for you. And so I, ha so I have been. I've been doing some work for them because they're helping us. And so there's no reason why I shouldn't be able to find a way to help them in the meantime. So if you need security or if you're getting divorced and you need a private investigator, if you have a business and you need a private investigator or security, uh, you want to call Twin Lights Security. They're based out of Gloucester, but they're very local. If while I'm driving around Lawrence, I get shot and killed, make sure you get my body to Perez Funeral Home because we do business with the people who do business with us. And he's on South Broadway. With the, it, it's the old Scott Funeral Home. If, you were, if you're an old-time Lawrence resident, it's the old Scott Funeral Home on, on South Broadway. Perez Funeral Home at 298 South Broadway in Lawrence. Um, you can, they do crematory services. They do all the stuff that they're supposed to do, right? And uh, Mike's a, a big fan of the show. He followed us when we go live. He's an advertiser now in the print edition of the paper, and he's now sponsoring this program. 
Perez Funeral Home and Crematory Services, 298 South Broadway in Lawrence. We appreciate him. Uh, Franklin Veloz from Veloz Auto Group. Uh, he specializes in people that have uh, maybe bad credit, no credit. Maybe you haven't had a job for a long period of time, so you don't think that maybe you qualify for a car loan. Usually, you know, they want you to have a job for a year or more. Uh, he specializes in getting people who have bad credit or no credit or maybe spotty credit, uh, getting them into a used car. He used to work for Charlie Dears Commonwealth Motors for a long, long time, so he knows his stuff. I think he was a credit manager over there or something. So he knows what he's doing, and, um, and he follows us live, too. I really appreciate that he does. Every time I see him pop on, I'm very excited about it. And I was there yesterday to deliver his newspaper, and he said he's already had customers come in from us talking about him on this show. So we appreciate Veloz Auto Group. Go see Franklin. He's at 17 Mass Ave. It's right at the very beginning of Mass Ave on the Lawrence North Andover line. Looks like uh, I'm reading all the comments on the show during the break. Looks like the people in Methuen are with me on this one, Paul. I think they're as furious as I am. And anybody who's watched any of these meetings knows that this is, this is just, this is a dog and pony show at this point. And I don't know what we do with it. But we've got to move on because I could, I could talk another half an hour about these clowns. And they are clowns. And you know what's really too bad before we move on, Paul? What's is that? that up until the last couple of weeks... I was calling the city councils and councilors and Methuen heroes. They went line by line through the budget. They made some tough cuts. I didn't agree with them all. Um, they 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 cut uh, a lot of waste. They cut a lot of abuse. Um, they they were they seemed like they were very very responsible. And again, even though I didn't agree with some of what they were doing, they did the four million dollar borrowing measure. They took a lot of time. They met sometimes two three times a week to get this done through all, straight throughout the summer. Most of them gave up their entire summer for this. And, and I'm writing stories saying, and I'm posting on Facebook saying what heroes they are, because this is the first time the city council has gone line by line through the budget. The last council was just, it wasn't even a discussion. It was, I make a motion to accept the budget, second the motion, all in favor say aye. And the next thing you know, you got like a $100 million budget. Nobody even knows what's in it. So I was giving them credit for all of that. They deserve credit for all of that. And then they do this. And it's like, you know, talk about a poop sandwich. Like, I'm trying to give them credit because they were doing so good. It's like having a little kid who's just having a good day and he's behaving and you praise him and you give him a cookie and then he starts like throwing his food. And you're like, you know, you were having such a good day. Like, what do you do with that? You know, you're grounded. You know, I was ready to bring you to Chuck E. Cheese. Now, now you're grounded. It's all over for you now. It's all over. So let's move on. We have uh, some breaking news, kind of, if you're watching us and not the rest of the news. And that is that the FBI report has come back on Supreme Court Justice nominee Brett Kavanaugh. And the FBI report states that there is no corroboration that Brett Kavanaugh tried to rape or sexually molest uh, uh, Blasey Ford. I'm not going to call her doctor because she's not a doctor. She's not an MD. She's, she's, she's like a doctor like you're a doctor. Yeah, she's, right? she's got a doctorate degree in uh, whatever she teaches. Yeah. I don't even know what she teaches. Psychology uh, or misleading something? Misleading testimony. She's got a doctorate mm-hmm. degree in misleading testimony. Oh. Um, so the FBI... Uh, came back with, uh, we only have another FBI investigation, the seventh one, because the Democrats said, we need an FBI investigation. We need an FBI investigation. Every single hearing, we need an FBI investigation. They need to look into this. So finally, one Republican, sissy boy Jeff Flake, said, yeah, okay, I got yelled at in an elevator and they hurt my feelings, so maybe what I'll do is we'll... I'll, I'll negotiate with the Democrats and the Republicans. We'll do another, another FBI investigation and see where that goes. So the FBI comes out and says, no corroboration. There's no evidence that he raped I anyone. I read this uh, this morning on your Facebook yes. account, but I haven't seen it anywhere else. Well, they haven't released it in public. It's a private. They, it's not a public document. Uh, okay, but somehow you got it, well, be- and you're certain that this is true. Because the president of the Senate, Mitch McConnell... Yeah. came out and said, I can't tell you word for word what's in it because it's a protected document, but there is nothing in these documents that corroborates. The FBI says they cannot corroborate any of the, uh, okay. any of the allegations against Brett Kavanaugh. So Mitch, Mitch McConnell made that uh, public. Yes. All right. And then, of course, the Democrats came out and said, that's not good enough. No, no, no. Even though we called for the FBI investigation, even though we demanded that it happen, even though we said that, that, by the way, all these people are voting against him anyway, no matter what happens. 
Now they're saying this wasn't good enough. The FBI didn't do a good enough job. Wait a minute. I, I thought the FBI walked on water to these guys. I thought the FBI was like above reproach. They were law enforcement officers who protect our country. They're heroes. I think I read somewhere right before I came here that they're, they're also saying that the Republicans are in the midst of a cover-up or something. Yeah, what they're, what, yeah. What they're covering up is um, their Coca-Cola at the, at, the, at the table. There's no cover-up. Everything was done in public. The real mm-hmm. cover-up is Dianne Feinstein knew about this when Brett Kavanaugh, before Brett Kavanaugh, was even nominated. She had a letter from this Blasey Ford nut, and she sat on it. And they sat on it, and they sat on it, and then they started to panic. At the 11th hour, when they realized all the hearings were over, and Kavanaugh had the votes to get on the council, um, to get on the Supreme Court, and they started to panic that they weren't going to be able to kill babies anymore, because that's really the only thing they care about. It's all about abortion. Don't fool yourself into thinking this has anything to do with sexual harassment or rape or anything else. This all has to do with we can't kill babies if Kavanaugh gets on the, on the, on the Supreme Court. And they panicked, and they said, okay, well, you know what? Screw the rape victim. Let's release it. Let's release it. So they released it to the public, and then they had to have another hearing, and then they had to have another investigation. And then when that investigation comes back with what they don't want to hear, they say that's not enough, too. There was a short list of, uh, of Trump possible nominees. Yes. Do you think the Dems have dirt on every single one of them? Probably. Do you think they, they, dug, they dug on all Probably. Of, every single one of those in case something like this happened? No, I, I, I heard on CNN, you hear lots of things on CNN that are, that are not true and actually mm-hmm. a mirror image of the truth. So I hear on CNN they're doing uh, Don Lemon or one of these clowns saying, um, well, if this, was a, if this was a conspiracy by the Democrats, how come they didn't do this with Judge Gorsuch? That's proof that it's not a conspiracy. No. Judge Gorsuch was a conservative justice replacing a conservative justice. Kavanaugh is going to be the swing vote. So they threw everything they could, including gang rape allegations against this guy with zero evidence, and then spent the last two weeks talking about his judicial temperament because he fought back. Well, you know what? If you were accused of rape, you'd probably be, probably be pretty pissed off too. And that has nothing to do with judicial temperament. He's not sitting in a courtroom judging other people. He's the one being judged. And so your temperament should have nothing to do with it. So they keep moving the goalpost, yeah, they moving keep, the goalpost. They keep reaching for different things. And now the backlash is so huge that there are even Democrats now saying they may vote yes on this guy. Time to walk away. Because there are Democrats like Joe Manchin who live, I think it's West Virginia? Yes, I think so. Who's in a very pro-Trump mm-hmm. state, and he's a Democrat. And if he votes no, he's toast. In fact, he might be toast anyway. Well, but if he it, votes no, he's toast. And Heidi Heitkamp, screw her. She's, I think she's from North Dakota. She's already said she's voting no, and she's trailing now in the polls mm. as an incumbent. How many incumbents really get beat? Like, 90% of incumbents get reelected. True. So the backlash, yeah. once again, the Democrats did what they always do. They go too far. And they accused this guy of gang rape, and they went on CNN, and CNN was carrying the water for the Democrats, pretending to be reporters, pretending to be objective, talking about sexual assault. We need to believe the woman because she has a vagina. We have to believe all women, any woman that comes forward. And by the way, men and women are equal. You know, just as a side note. We're all supposed to be equal, but when the woman makes an accusation, she's got a vagina and we should believe her. In fact, Wolf Blitzer actually said yesterday, uh, I, I tried really hard to like, go back and record it for the show. He actually said, you know, Donald Trump mocked Bl- Dr. Blasey Ford at his, uh, at his um, uh, rally. Ra- rally the other day. And, you know, he's the man and she's the woman and he should know better. And I was like, wait, What? He's the man, and she's the woman, and he should take the high road. That, he should know better. That was uh, that was his words. That was his words, and this is Wolf Blitzer, the guy that campaigned for Hillary, the guy that cried on election night when Hillary lost, who says he cares about women, and you're going to belittle women by saying because he's a man, what he's better than her, so he should he should he should behave better. Is that what he's saying? Because I think that's what he's saying, Paul. He's actually uh, unwittingly making a distinction between the psyches of men and women. Mm-hmm. There. But I thought we were all supposed to be equal. I thought men and women well. were the same. Men can be women. Women can be men. We can be trans <laughs> testicles. We're all supposed to be the same. I thought it was transvestites Whatever. and transsexuals. Whatever. <laughs> but we're all supposed to be the same. Supposed to be, I, got, I got banned from Facebook for three days because I mm. posted something about a transgender saying it's too bad that she's psychologically damaged. She was born a girl. She's still a girl. I got banned mm. because I'm supposed to believe that men and women are exactly the same as gender is fluid 
unless a man says something bad about a woman, then we need special laws to protect her from the big, strong, evil men. Every, yeah. I'm going to say it again. Everything the Democrats say they believe is in direct contradiction to everything else the Democrats say they believe. I think they did. Are you taking notes for Tom, to, for Tom Troy on TNT? <laughs> We're getting Nancy Troy here taking notes. I think they believe the narrative on a very uh, superficial level. Mm. And so that's the level that they, that they work at and that they, they sort of their public face. Yeah. Deep down inside, get them, get them in their kitchen or in their bedroom with their wife. Right. You know, listen to their conversations. How much do you think they actually believe in No, this they don't nonsense? believe anything they say they believe in. None of it. They don't believe in mm. any of it. And by the way, whenever they don't get their own way, they then become violent. We're going to see a lot of left-wing violence after Kavanaugh. You remember where you heard it first? Well, if Kavanaugh gets confirmed over the weekend on Sunday, if he gets confirmed Saturday, on Sunday you will see Antifa and the left-wing goons will be out there committing violence uh, against anybody who they perceive to be conservative. They will be out there burning things. They'll be overturning cars because that's what leftists do. When they don't get their own way by bullying you and making false accusations and they still don't get their way, they resort to violence. All, sure. the, while, all the while CNN is, is saying, well, there's neo-Nazis. They're, they're so bad. Yeah. That's always been the pattern with yeah. the left. You, 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 first, um, you first try to destroy their reputation, and if that doesn't work, then you really try to destroy their reputation, and if that doesn't work... All that's left is violence. Well, you know, the, the funny thing is I'm watching uh, Anderson Cooper, who is, who is just awful. And I watch CNN all day in my office. It keeps my blood mm. pressure up so I can <laughs> keep working. And um, I hate watch, as Ann Coulter says. I watch all the, all the horrible shows. And, and, and Anderson Cooper is coming out talking about how if this FBI investigation shows that Brett Kavanaugh said anything that wasn't true, well, he said, he said he, he's never blacked out during a drinking episode, all this stuff. Mm. Then that's perjury, and mm. he should be criminally charged. Be careful what you ask for, mm. because now we have learned that Blasey Ford had lied during her testimony. Yes. A previous boyfriend came forward and under, under oath, I believe, submitted an affidavit saying that she once coached another person on how to beat a lie detector test. Yes, I read that, yes. And under oath, she said during the hearings that she, she never, never did, did any of that. Never did anything So be careful like what you ask for, because Blasey Ford might be the one being charged with perjury. At the end of the day, the woman that caused the stories about the gang rapes and Blasey Ford and the other one, they themselves might end up in jail. And I think they should. I think they should. I think there needs to be a way to stop this from happening, because Trump's going to be able to nominate at least one or two more. And we can't have this every single time there's a nominee with all these people coming we out will. saying he gang raped children at a preschool and he cut someone off in the line. Paul, did you hear the one he threw a piece? Of, he threw an ice cube. At ice cubes. Tender? Yes, I heard about the ice cube wow. uh, caper. Yes. Like I'm glad they got that one out before the vote because you the know old ice cubes. We we, we got saved right. by that one. All right, just to uh, just to be a little fair about this, I do think that during the testimony that um, Kavanaugh did equivocate. He did avoid some of those questions a little bit. He played with the language a little bit. Yep. And I think that was because he, was, he perhaps was trying to avoid some embarrassing things that he may have written or said as an adolescent that don't relate to the charges. Right. So in that case, you can give him a pass for that because really the public doesn't need to know some silly things that you wrote in a yearbook or that you wrote somewhere on somebody's note or something. And you probably didn't even know what you were talking about as a 17-year-old that do not directly relate to the charges themselves. Right. Now, he didn't directly lie. He just sort of equivo equivocated in, in his language. Yeah, there's the a way couple of points where he didn't answer a question. Didn't, didn't, didn't give straight answers to some of that. But let but me ask you, is there, is there a perfect friggin' human being on this planet? But is there one who can get nominated that's never done anything in the world? Like no. never stole a pack of gum when they were five? No, that's Never took a cookie off a classmate when they were in third grade? Like is there nobody... There's if nobody you, out there that's, that's perfect, Paul. And if you go digging for information that's humiliating to the person when they were an adolescent or a child, right. those folks don't have a right to know that unless it directly relates right. to the charge of rape. And, and, right. and those questions I don't think did. And I say even if he raped her in high school, <laughs> I'm, oh still, I'm still voting yes. I, I, I'm laughing because I'm just... You know where I'm going. I knew you where you were going there, Yes. He's a minor. The, the, mm. demo, the same Democrats that across the country are trying to decriminalize non uh, misdemeanors, mm. the same Democrats who are letting prisoners free, who are letting prisoners out, 
Um, Cuomo just signed a thing allowing prisoners to vote. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The same ones that are saying don't put a, a wall on the border, the same ones that are attacking the police and siding with criminals. Well, wait a minute. Are the same ones the, saying, wait a minute, if you raped someone in high school, I mean, the, the statute of limitations, first of all, the statute of limitations was one year. If he had raped her in high school that year, back then the statute of limitation for rape of a minor by a minor was one year. All right. And secondly, he would have been tried in juvenile court. So, so you can't tell me that if a guy makes, if, if a person makes a mistake in high school, does something bad in high school, that 53 years later, hmm. they don't deserve well, to have a job because of something they did in high school. I thought we were supposed to be building kids' self esteem, Paul. Well, there's much to say about that. But let's be clear about what Kavanaugh was uh, accused of doing. Right. He wasn't accused of rape. Right. He was accused by Blasey Ford of getting her in a, in a bedroom, putting her on a bed, and laying on top of her. And then she said, and I think if that door didn't open, he may have raped me. Right. So It was I mean, all in how, her mind. It, it could have been in her mind. You know, he might have not thought of that whatsoever. Maybe he was just fooling around with it. If this, if this ever happened, of course, he said he wasn't even there. But it wasn't rape. It wasn't attempted rape, literally. It was basically, if you had to give it a word, it was groping. Right. A 17-year-old groping a 15-year-old, does, is that enough information that we have, even if it was corroborated, to make sure that somebody does not have a livelihood at 53 years old? Right. I guess that's a question to ask. I hope that Brett Kavanaugh, after all this, decides that he's going to strike back. I hope when he gets on the, on the Supreme Court, mm. the very first opportunity they have to hear a Roe versus Wade overturning type case, <laughs> that they take it and they overturn Roe in a day. I hope they overturn Roe in a day and says, uh, it throws the big middle finger to the left. <laughs> because up until this He's point... He's got to remain objective. Listen, the reason why all of this talk about sex and rape and sexual molestation and all this. The reason why they talked about all this, Paul, is because there's a few things they didn't want people to know about Brett Kavanaugh. Mm. One of them is that in one of his lower court decisions as a judge, he sided with Planned Parenthood and Mm. Planned Parenthood's ability to raise money to lobby for their political views. Mm. And the case came before him, even though he's pro-life, the case came before him, and he looked at the Constitution, and he said, no, Planned Parenthood under the Constitution, under the laws, under the federal laws, has the right to raise money to lobby for their political views, just as anyone else would. Mm. And what the, what the Democrat senators didn't want was for that to become the focus, because then they lose all of the independents, they lose half right. of their base, right. who is not going to go out there and be rallying and yelling and screaming about... We have to stop Kavanaugh. So this whole thing, it was like a Methuen City Council meeting. The whole thing was just a lie. Not like that. It was a, it was a lie. No, no, it's not like that. It wasn't, no. qu- it wasn't quite as well, bad as the Methuen City bad. Council. Yeah. I think Steve Saber should be a Democrat on the Senate. I think he should run for United States Senate and, and get mm. on the Judiciary Committee because he'd be perfect for that. All right, your prediction. It's probably gonna, the vote is probably going to be tomorrow. Does he is thumbs up or thumbs yeah, down? Yeah, no, he gets the votes. He gets it. He gets the votes. I think um, Flake is probably still going to vote no because he's a sissy. What and about uh, Collins and the other one? I think they vote yes, and I think you even get three or four Democrats will vote yes hmm. uh, because they're in big trouble. And the backlash is huge. Like just in the last 24 hours, the numbers, the polling numbers for the Democrats in red states have like flipped. Like there was, I can't remember which one it was, but there was one that was up 11 points two days ago and is now down by nine. Hmm. So the public is on to them. The public sees that this has been a, a, a horror show. And they're watching well, that a guy had to defend what he wrote in his friggin' yearbook in high school and what he had on his calendar in grammar school. And does any of this have anything to do with how he will interpret the Constitution? No. And I think the public is tired of it all. Do you think that some of those uh, at the Senate hearing were posturing to run for president in 2020? Yeah, a lot of them were. Cor- especially Cory Booker comes yes, to my mind. Yes, doesn't Sen- he? Senator Spartacus. Doesn't he? Yeah. I mean, I, I, that whole, all of those speeches I broke that he the made, rules. Look how cool I am. I broke the rules. I, I I'm going to continue to break the rules because I'm cool. I'm a I, bad boy. I think he was playing to the base, and his stock might have come up with the base, for all I know. Yeah, I, I think if they fail, mm. if the Democrats fail— to stop the Kavanaugh nomination, the left is going to take those guys out because the left is furious at their own for not being able to pull it off. I mean, they're mad that they didn't accuse him of child molestation. Like, they, they, they wanted any cost to stop this guy because he's, he's going to stop us from killing babies. 
He's going to stop abortions. That's their view. And they're going to be pissed off at Booker and the rest, just like they were mad at Hillary mm. for letting certain things happen. And I think they're going to, I think they're going to take a walk on these guys. If you're wrong, and in 2018 they take over the House yep. and maybe the Senate. Yep. Um, Start learning Chinese. Will they seek to impeach both Trump and Kavanaugh? Yes. Both yep. of them. First order right. of business. All right. It'll be the first order of business. Impeach Trump, impeach Kavanaugh. Now, if they are successful in any one of those two, or both, does this country survive? No. No, stop learning Chinese or Arabic, one of the two, because mm. we, won't, we won't have any freedoms. We've lost our freedom of speech. We're certainly losing our freedom to assemble. We've, we'll, 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 we, lose, we lose the entire foundation of what is holding this country together, which is the Supreme Court and the executive branch, which is the presidency. And So sane people have to get out and vote in 2018. Next month. Yeah, people who actually give a shit and follow this stuff have to go out and vote. And as mad as I am at the Republicans, you've got to vote for the Republicans. You have no choice. There's two parties. And one of them wants to completely rip up our Constitution and throw it away. Remember what they said. You are not innocent until proven guilty. Remember yep. what they said. The Constitution doesn't matter if you're not in a court of law, which is a total lie. And that's the, con that's the world they want to live in. That's the world they want to create for you. And if they win, that's the world you're going to live in. It's slowly getting there. Yeah, we are. All right, Paul, thank you for coming. No Great problem. show today. I'll read all the comments once we go offline. Thank you to all the people listening. Thank you to our sponsors. Uh, real quick, we have on Sunday uh, at the Northandova Farmer's Market, we're doing a drive for the homeless food and clothing drive. First and Main Street, Sunday, 10 to 2 in North Andover. Thank you for listening, everyone. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.